I'm Chris King. Welcome back to my blog. About a year ago, I did my first kind of mass writing, um, and it was a reflection of what I was seeing in the culture. And I titled it Being Strong and Resourceful in the Midst of Fear and Reactivity. And I want to talk with you about that now, in person, rather than just in the written word. As I move about in the world observing and listening to what people are talking about these days, I'm once again amazed by the power of beliefs and the difference of the impact between beliefs that are love-based and beliefs that are fear-based. It seems the media is committed to making sure you know how bad things are over and over again. With repetition, people start believing it's true. How about you? Today, I want to remind you of your strength, your resourcefulness, your courage, the power of your choice, and your ability to learn and grow. I believe in you. Remember all the fearful messages about what would happen when we shifted to the new millennium? We were told computers would shut down, no electricity, there would be riots and break-ins because alarms wouldn't work. We would be vulnerable to attack, and there would be no food on the shelves in the markets, just to name a few. What happened? Nothing. And yet millions of people wasted precious moments, maybe hours, anticipating that something really, really bad was going to happen, which made it real for them until the clock ticked to 12 a.m., 2000. What is the difference that makes the difference. The work at Wings has rocked my world again and again in a powerful, positive, and profound way. When I change my mind, I change my world is how I describe this transformation. I want to share with you five of the most significant shifts in consciousness that have helped me practice staying awake, being resourceful, and proactive instead of reactive. My hope is they'll support you in remembering how powerful you are in each moment to create the world you want to live in right now. This is an important reminder. These patterns are not about resisting your fear or anybody else's, because resistance breeds more resistance. Pretending you're not afraid just makes that little voice in your head yell louder. Rather, these beliefs, or presuppositions, are actually based in acceptance that fear is a choice and there are other options that serve you better. Another important piece of information. Remember when you were told that the brain doesn't change? That you were born with a certain number of brain cells and the only thing that you could do is kill them by using alcohol and drugs? Well. Welcome to the world of research and discovery. Our brain structure changes responding to new thinking, feeling, and experience. Neuroplasticity is a new field of science that explores this. Here's a quote that describes what happens. According to the theory of neuroplasticity, thinking, learning, and acting actually change both the brain's physical structure, or anatomy, and functional organization, isn't that cool, or physiology from top to bottom. Neuroscientists are presently engaged in a reconciliation of critical period studies demonstrating the immutability of the brain after development with the new findings of neuroplasticity, which reveal the mutability of both the structural and functional aspects. A substantial paradigm shift is now underway. Canadian psychiatrist Norman Doge has in fact stated that neuroplasticity is one of the most extraordinary discoveries of the 20th century. So I am not kidding when I said, when I changed my mind, I changed my world. The five significant shifts in consciousness that assist me to stay awake are, number one, moving from victim to accountable. When I came into the Personal Effectiveness Seminar, I believed that I was doing everything I could to make my marriage, my family, and life work. And I was working very hard. I was resentful with a capital R. I blamed my husband for my feelings of dissatisfaction and loneliness. 
I was certain he was the main reason our marriage wasn't working. I wanted him to change so that my life would get better. I realized with some horror during the personal effectiveness seminar that I saw myself as the victim of my husband. I will always remember the freedom I felt the moment I realized that my choices are my own. That my choices had gotten me right where I was, and because they were all mine, I could change them. I was the one I had been waiting for all this time. I could choose based on what I wanted instead of pleasing others. Taking ownership of my choices, being accountable, I became thoughtful about my deepest values and how to live them moment to moment. Light bulbs were going off with great regularity, illuminating how much of myself I had given away by being dependent on others and seeking approval by saying yes when I really wanted to say no. Becoming accountable means the end of blame and fault finding. It means the beginning of, I believe, the most profound spiritual path. The second shift in consciousness that helped me shift from reactive to resourceful is it's about me. Learning that whatever is going on inside of me in any given moment, feelings, thoughts, desires, and actions are about me was and still is profound and again freeing. I am the one who decides what things mean to me and how I respond to that meaning is my creation. My assumptions, my interpretations, judgments and beliefs are all made up by me. And I was acting as if I was right about it all. So that's where my loneliness, emptiness and resentment came from, from my own belief system. What I'm thinking and feeling in any moment is my greatest teacher because these things reveal my belief system. Instead of reacting unconsciously, now I can ask myself, what am I thinking right now that's causing me to feel or act this way? If it's happening inside of me, it's about me. If it's happening inside of you, <laughs> it's about you. So this is the end of the words, you make me. The third shift in consciousness was all thoughts and emotions come from one of two sources, fear or love. When I first read this statement in A Course of Miracles, I sat there knowing I was staring at the truth. It made complete sense to me. Fear is a thought that resists, contracts, reacts, tightens up, shuts down, grasps, dominates, attacks, makes wrong and blames. Love is a thought that accepts, expands, relax, engages, collaborates, learns, accepts, and is accountable. Fear says, this is the way it is. Love says, there are other ways of looking at this. Let's look together. Using this premise, I can locate where I am in any moment. If I'm tightening up, I ask myself, what am I afraid of? And then I explore my interpretations of what's going on around me. And with that insight, I can make a choice that serves me better. The fourth shift in consciousness that helps me stay resourceful instead of reactive is, and this is really powerful, <laughs> we do not describe the world we see. We see the world we describe. This is from Synchronicity, a book by Joseph Jaworski. Say this to yourself a few times. Now this gets really interesting and is based on quantum thought. Here is the power of language and beliefs. Our language and our nervous system combine to constantly construct our environment. We can only see what we talk about because we're speaking blind, beyond language. Language is like another set of eyes and hands for the nervous system, through which we coordinate actions with others. We exist in language. 
It is by languaging and recurrent actions or human practices that we create meaning together. And when we describe it, we create distinctions that govern our actions. We lay the path down by an accumulation of recurrent human practices. By so doing, we create repeat performance after repeat performance, not seeing the truth of the moment, instead reacting to our projections from the past. You may have thought that our attention to our use of language at wings bordered on anal. <laughs> However, shifting from describing what I don't want to describing what I do want in a positive frame changes how we experience our world and our place in it. The fifth and last um, shift in consciousness that helps me stay resourceful instead of reactive is what I give my attention to grows stronger. When I focus my attention on what's wrong in my life, it became monumental and insurmountable. I didn't realize that I was the one doing the focusing. I thought it was just happening to me. When I learned that what I focused on was my choice and how I interpreted what I was focusing on was also my choice, I was blown away. When I focus on my weaknesses, they increase. And when I focus on my strengths, wow, they increase. Another way of saying this is, what grows is what gets watered. When I focus on being right, I keep trying to prove it. And you can imagine the results. When I focus on collaborating with a person instead of getting my way, collaboration grows in my life and relationships blossom with love and respect. These five changes of mine assisted me again and again, right now today, to stay awake and learning. I offer them to you to see if they work for you too. Let me know what you discover. Number one, moving from victim to accountable. Number two, it's about me. Number three, all thoughts and emotions come from one of two sources, fear or love. Number four, we do not describe the world we see, but we see the world we describe. And number five, what I give my attention to grow stronger. Thank you so much. Perhaps it's time for you to answer a very important question. What if my real job is to live an extraordinary life? That's what we do here at Wings. See you next time.